So how can we now utilize that submitted data? Well, for that, let's go to views py because that is ultimately the place where this incoming request is handled. You might have noticed that a request was sent successfully and we didn't get any error once we added the CSRF token. Now, the reason for that is that this request URL for this post request was actually localhost 8000 slash nothing. So it was that same URL we use for loading this page. If I enter localhost 8000 in the browser, we send a request to the same URL. It's just a GET request, but it's always the same URL. Now, because that's the case, we always hit this path here in the end in our reviews app. And therefore we ultimately end up in this view function and there we always render this template. So this view function gets triggered for both a post and a get request. And that is not uncommon. Though to make it clear, you could also change the URL to which your post request is sent. Back in the template on the form, besides adding a method, you can also add an action. And this allows you to specify the path after your domain to which this request should be sent. Now, if I set it to slash nothing, it will be that standard URL, that main domain URL to which it already is being sent. But if I set it, for example, to slash user review and save this, then if I reload this page and enter max and click send, then we would get a page not found error because now the request is sent to our domain slash user review. So you can change that URL to which the request is being sent. It's still a post request, but now also sent to a different URL. But here, I don't wanna change it. Hence, I'll set it to slash nothing, and I could even omit it, as you saw before, but to be very clear, I will add the action attribute, but send it to slash nothing. And therefore, it will arrive in this view function. So now in this view function, we actually wanna check whether we get a post or a get request and then do different things based on that request type, that request method. So we get a post and a get request, two different kinds of requests in the same view function. And as I mentioned, this is not uncommon or bad, but typically we wanna do different things based on the request method. We might not always want to render our template. Instead, if a post request is received, we might wanna read that post request and then do something with that. We might wanna read the submitted data, store it in a database or do something like this, and then send back a page, possibly a different page than we do for a GET request. Because for a GET request, I wanna send back that review template. Maybe for a POST request, once we read the data and did something with it, we wanna send back a different page. Maybe then we want to send back a thank you page, Hence, I'll add a thank you template, rebuild my skeleton. And yes, we could extend a base template for this, but I'll keep it simple and just duplicate it here. And then there simply say, thank you. So that could be the page, the template, which we wanna render for a successful post request. Now to do that, we need to add a if check in our view function. And we need to check the request, so this request object, which we get, method. This request object, which we get here, has a method property, which tells us about the HTTP method which was used for this request. So in our case, if it's a GET or a POST request. And we'll get this method identifier as a string. So here I can check if the request method is POST and then do something and only else do something else and return this rendered template. Now, what do I wanna do if it is a post request though? Well, then I might want to extract the data which I receive on that request. So here I might want to get the entered username and we can get access to the data by accessing request again to read some data from the request and now the post key. So method gives us access to the method that was used for submitting the data. Dot post gives us access to the data itself. To be precise, post will hold a dictionary, 
where the keys are the names set on the inputs in the form and the values are the entered values. So here I can get access to a username key on that dictionary because I have a username input, uh, input named username in my form. And that will be that entered username. Now here I'll just print it for the moment. We could of course store it to the database through a model or we could write it to a file, but I'll just print it here. And then thereafter we might wanna render this template here, this thank you template. Now we can of course do this by returning a different render result here inside of this if block and here return reviews slash thank you dot html. That's something we could do. But typically we don't want to send back html code as a response for a post request. Because a post request is meant to submit data to the server, not to get some page. Therefore, what we typically do upon a post request is instead of returning a rendered template, we redirect to a different URL with a get request and that different URL will then render a template. So for that, I'll add a second view function here. Let's name it thank you maybe, where I get a request. And here I will then return this rendered template. Now we just need to register a URL for that. So I'll add a path of let's say thank you and there point at this thank you view. So I did that in URLs py in my reviews app folder. With that we have that thank you view and URL. And now here in this if case in the review view in the post branch so to say I want to redirect at this URL so that the URL in the browser bar changes and we switch from a post back to a get request. This is not technically required. We could render the template here, but it is better. It also ensures that if users reload that thank you page thereafter, they don't get this box where they're asked if they want to resubmit data because the page was loaded with a post request originally, but instead it smoothly reloads. Hence here, we can now return a redirect. And we do that by importing from Django HTTP, our HTTP response redirect. And we then here return HTTP response redirect and to that constructor function, which we're calling here, I pass slash thank you to redirect to my domain slash thank you. And again, this will then result in a brand new request being sent, a get request specifically, which then will ultimately reach this view here and lead to this thank you template being sent back. So with all those changes in place, we are now extracting the incoming data, we're printing it, and we are redirecting to a new URL and view. If we save all of that, we can give this a try. And uh, we go back to just localhost 8000 here. And if I now enter Maximilian here and click send, I see thank you thereafter and the URL changed to thank you. We see that two requests were sent, a post request to localhost 8000, where the status code is 302, which is a redirection status code. And then thank you is another request which was sent, which is this get request to thank you, which is sent because of our redirection. And if we go back to the server, we see Maximilian here in the log. And that's coming from this print statement because we successfully extracted that data. And of course, logging it to the console is just some dummy solution here so that we can see that it worked. In reality, we might want to store this to a database and we're going to do so throughout this module. But before we do that, I want to dive into a couple of gotchas with our current request where we manually build this form and all the inputs.